Howdy, Smarrels here. Coming to you from my 125 gallon fish tank with my Oscar Hulk and my 18 inch common pleco. And as you can see, I've done a little bit of aquascaping with this tank. Put some rocks in that I found from the yard. Got them all nice and cleaned up. And there's gonna be a video on this tank. I'd say about probably the next couple of days when if I able to find some time. Anyways, let's get to looking at the Tetra Whisper EX20 and start with our review. Now, this filter, while great for many different types of uh, tanks, I would not actually agree that this thing be used for 20 gallon tanks. Uh, the filtration just doesn't seem to be right and I'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit, but uh, my quickie review is that this filter, while it's a good filter for smaller tanks, I would not recommend it for 20 gallon tanks. All right, look at the box. My box is a little beat up because I've had it for a little while. Been reviewing the unit for the last, you know, month or two, get putting it through its paces. And yeah, there we go. I tried this filter on several different types of uh, setups. I tried it on a 20 gallon, tried it on my 55 gallon tank, tried it on my 125 gallon tank, just to see how it would uh, handle different bio loads. Now, in the process of that, my filter has lost the pump because somehow I misplaced it in the middle of doing my reviews and I lost the hood. Now, if you wanna see what the device looks like completely, there you go, you can see it all intact the pump actually sits in the water and so that makes it so you don't have to you know prime the system by pouring water on the top it's already primed once you start it up so there's no worries about that there and that's part of the design is actually pretty cool uh, with all my other hang on back filters that I'm testing out and trying you have to prime you have to pour water into them before you turn them on otherwise you can end up burning out the pump now, with the way that works, the water comes in through here, and it's got a little tube that loosely hangs onto it. That's my first gripe, is that tube, you know, has a little bit of rubber stopper or little rubber seal thing that's on the outside, and it connects to the power to the pump, and the pump it actually ends up leaking there. I don't know if that was a manufacturing defect or something, but it actually leaks there, and I did not like that. It, it, it caused a bunch of problems with flow. Now. As it comes back through here, it go. As it comes back through here, it goes through the filter meet or back behind the filter meter media, through it, and then under this plate here for the bio filtration. But it goes under that, which this thing is so hard to get into place if you're not actually actively looking at it. It goes behind, it goes behind, it goes down, and then flows up in the front, and then. That's how you get all of your biobacteria or your water flowing through there so your bacteria collects on there. Kind of an, an, an ingenious way of trying to get biofiltration so you have more surface area. I think it was a good idea. It's just a poor implementation. Now, as I said, this is a good filter for tanks, you know, that are 15, maybe even in between 15 and 20. Uh, Definitely not good for a 20 gallon long. Uh, it doesn't flow enough so that it spreads the water all the way back. You're just constantly filtering one section of water. Um, even if you have it set for the long way of the tank. Uh, for short, for uh, not as long tanks, like a 20 gallon tall, it worked kind of okay. Uh, I had it under different bio loads. But uh, yeah, how this works is you got your filter cartridge here. Now the filter cartridge, it's just basically a neat little clamshell type dealy. And you got your filter pad here and you can replace this and it's got carbon in it and it's all one sealed contained little thing. And it's actually the container is actually labeled front and that's it. It just says front on it on a couple of spots here. If I can get that, there we go. Front, front, and squeeze. When you squeeze both sides, it opens up. You take your pad, make sure that your coarse side goes on the back so that your fine media, your large media particles 
get taken out here and your fine media particles get taken out here and you put it into the filter slide it in it has does have these little things on the back here so that uh, it sits against the back pretty well and it's got a little bridge that it lines up on so it sits in there nice and snug it does stop you know backflow but I had a problem with this when the fill when this pad gets clogged it doesn't overflow here it overflows right here and it just overflows in there bypasses everything or it'll flow back over but it just this design for a hob it was a good idea poor poor implementation I'm sorry Tetra now I'm going to suggest some uh, some reimaginings or some things you could do better for this number one this whole curved situation on the bottom get rid of it it's not doing you any good it just causes backups like crazy this filter pad if you want it to be for a 20 gallon tank make it a little bit bigger make it a, a, a the, the two different types of uh, filtration on the one pad awesome idea unfortunately your fine side is a little too fine and gets clogged up within a couple of days now hang on back filter you shouldn't have to if you have a you know a decent stocking not heavy not light you shouldn't have to clean this for a, for at least two weeks if at most or if at, at the least a month but I was having to clean this thing every three days three days I'm sorry that's way too much I don't do tank maintenance that many times at a week I do I'm on this 125 I do I would guess around maybe a 30% water change twice maybe three times a week depending on how bad these two sh take a crap but I mean it just doesn't make sense and the, and the strainer the strainer makes things even worse this strainer right here clogs up worse than the filter pad I'm sorry Tetra I know that you guys gave me this filter for a review and I would love I would love to give this thing a 10 out of 10 because the design the the, the, the thought behind this is a great idea but the implementation sucks I just I, I can't get past that so I'm gonna have to give the Tetra Whisper EX20 for what it's designed for it's it's barely manageable it works kind of and it, it, it's too much maintenance on a filter that you should be able to set and forget you know at and for the least the least amount of maintenance a month I sh if at, at the most once every two weeks all my other filters stay clean and clear for two weeks I don't have to touch them for two weeks and I've got some pretty damn excuse the language but I've got some pretty darn good waste makers poop makers and it just this just doesn't do anything for me I'm sorry so that's my review of the Tetra Whisper EX20 I have to give it at least a 4 out of 10 because it just it does good enough but when you've got fish that are worth money, this Oscar is worth $30. This Pleco is probably worth $30. I just, for the price that this filter is, which is roughly around, I'd say, about $20, $24, maybe $33, and maybe on Amazon, I can't, I can't give it any more than four out of four out of ten. It just, I want to like it. I do. I want to like this filter a lot but because it's got some great great things you know you want to fill it you don't have to take the whole lid off you can t there's a little piece that just flips up you can pull your filter cartridge out clean it put it back in if for some reason the pumps not you know running you could prime it from there with water it might work 
And another thing is, is the pump on this thing makes a lot of noise, a lot of noise. If you're somebody who's into quiet, for a whisper filter, I shouldn't hear it. The pump's underwater, I shouldn't be able to hear it, but I could hear the pump over all my other filters. So yeah, there it is. The Whisper EX20, I'm not exactly too fond of the darn thing. I wish it would be better. The idea behind the filtration is an awesome idea. And it could have worked a heck of a lot better if A, the tubing was actually put on firmly so it didn't accidentally bypass. And B, your chamber design was a little better. Then I think it would have been an awesome, awesome filter. And I, you know, I'd be able to give it higher than maybe a five. You know, I, I say four, but I I want to give it a five because it did filter the water, but it was clogging every three days. Okay, so that was the Tetra Whisper EX120. At the most, I'd give it a five. At the very least, a four out of ten uh, for all the points that I placed out. The next filter we're going to do is the Marineland Penguin 100B. I'm really excited to do this review i've been waiting to do it for a while but i wanted to get all the other filters out of the way the marine line fil filter reviews are the ones that i've been really looking forward to so we'll see you then uh, this video will probably come up next week have a good one and it might come out sooner at all depending on how long it takes me to edit this so have a good one guys